Good evening, welcome to the Daily Office, and thank you for joining me. This is Night Prayer for Thursday, August 24th. It's the 11th week after Pentecost and week 7 in our psalm cycle. And the scripture for this service, Psalm 133, and Acts 24, verse 1 through 23. Now join me in singing verse 4 of part 2 of Psalm 66 by Isaac Watts. If sin lay covered in my heart, while prayer employed my tongue, then you had shown me no regard, nor I your praises sung. Our help is in the name of God Most High, the Maker of heaven and earth. Let us confess our sins to God. O merciful God, we have sinned through our own fault, in our thoughts and words and deeds, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We beseech you, overlook our faults, and cast our sins behind your back, that we may serve you and praise you all the days of our lives. Amen. And may Almighty and merciful God grant us forgiveness of all our sins, and the grace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, come to my assistance, make haste to help thee. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah, see how good and pleasant it is for friends to dwell together in unity. Hallelujah. Psalm 133, and please recite it with me. Hallelujah, see how good and pleasant it is for friends to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down the beard of Aaron to the skirts of his robe, like the dew of Hermon that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there God commanded the blessing of life forevermore. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See how good and pleasant it is for friends to dwell together in unity. Hallelujah. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 24, beginning at verse 1. Five days later, the high priest Ananias came down with some elders and an attorney, a certain Tertullus, and they reported their case against Paul to the governor. When Paul had been summoned, Tertullus began to accuse him, saying, Your Excellency, because of you, we have long enjoyed peace, and reforms have been made for this people because of your foresight. We welcome this in every way and everywhere with utmost gratitude. But to detain you no further, I beg you to hear us briefly with your customary graciousness. We have, in fact, found this man a pestilent fellow, an agitator among all the Jews throughout the world, and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. He even tried to profane the temple, and so we seized him. By examining him yourself, you will be able to learn from him concerning everything of which we accuse him. The Jews also joined in the charge by asserting all of this was true. When the governor motioned to him to speak, Paul replied, I cheerfully make my defense, knowing that for many years you have been a judge over this nation. As you can find out, it is not more than 12 days since I went up to worship in Jerusalem. They did not find me disputing with anyone in the temple or stirring up a crowd either in the synagogue or throughout the city. Neither can they prove to you the charge that they now bring against me. But this I admit to you, that according to the way, 
which they call a sect. I worship the God of our ancestors, believing everything laid down according to the law or written in the prophets. I have a hope in God, a hope that they themselves also accept, that there will be a resurrection of both the righteous and the unrighteous. Therefore, I do my best always to have a clear conscience towards God and all people. Now, after some years, I came to bring alms to my nation and to offer sacrifices. And while I was doing this, they found me in the temple, completing the rite of purification without any crowd or disturbance. But there were some Jews from Asia. They ought to be here before you to make an accusation, if they have anything against me. Or let these men here tell what came crime they found when I stood before the council, unless it was this one sentence that I called out while standing before them. It is about the resurrection, resurrection of the dead that I am on trial before you today. But Felix, who was rather well informed about the way, adjourned the hearing with the comment, When Lysias, the tribune, comes down, I will decide your case. And then he ordered the centurion to keep him in custody, but to let him have some liberty and not to prevent any of his friends from taking care of his needs. Here ends the lesson. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O God of truth. Keep us as the apple of your eye, Hide us under the shadow of your wings, and for all of your intentions. And now in the words our Savior taught us, we're bold to say, Our beloved which art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us as we forgive others. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow between Christians of every denomination, that we may heal the shameful divisions in your church. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Bless Jesus, my soul, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever, amen. Hallelujah.